Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology forecast or message for the 4th to the 11th of August 2018. First of all, let me apologize for not issuing a video last week. My computer broke down on this Mercury retrograde and I couldn't edit the videos. But as I am an astrologer and I anticipated that, no I'm joking, I had a feeling that the computer wouldn't last long. So I had the uh, the initiative to pre-order a new computer and the new computer actually arrived from the US that the, my, my computer broke down on Thursday and on Sunday which is a working day here in Israel the new computer arrived and here it is and as you can see I've cut my hair a little I've had my summer trim it's great to feel the wind down my neck and the breeze and it took some years off, don't you say? And I'm having my morning tennis treat. This is Arabic coffee with a bit of vanilla soya milk inside. It's the perfect combination between a ragged, sunburnt Arab man and a blonde vegan from Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So, what do we have this week? As you know, we are in an eclipse season. This is a very turbulent time with this Mars retrograde, Mercury retrograde, Mars being so close. It's a hectic time. But this week we have the choice because there's two energies going on in the sky. One is very calm, very tranquil, very spiritual. It's very artistic and wise. And it knows that the universe will get us there, in a way. Of course, it could be too passive as well. <laughs> There's a song by, introduced to me by Maurice Fernandez, but it's by Guru Singh and Seal. And it goes something like this. To be confident that the infinite will take care of it. We're so fortunate. To be confident that the infinite will take care of it. Oh, we're so fortunate. Something or other. Um, this is one energy happening and we'll elaborate on that a little later. And the other energy is that chaotic, challenging, impatient energy that is in the sky. And it's not necessarily bad or good. Both can be utilized for good or bad reasons, the challenging chaotic energy can break down things that we don't actually need anymore in our life and make us move forward. But it could stress us out and make us more violent and, and brutal and, and, and intolerant and angry and sexual as well. On the other hand, that very artistic, spiritual, wise and tranquil energy can open up things for us, can assure us, and can give us the connection we need to the sublime, to our intuition, to our inspiration, to God, to calm us down and to understand that we are guided and that we are sheltered. But it can lead us to be being too passive and not taking action that is actually needed for these fruits to bloom and, and ripen in our lives, in the plane of reality, and not just in our mind's eye. So let's go down to the days. Saturday the 4th, Moon in Taurus, squaring Mars, conjunct Uranus, and a little later on also trining Saturn, squaring the Sun. It's not such an easy day, and it's a day that we need to watch our own temper and the temper of people around us. It's a good day to do things that are connected with your career or are of strategic value to you. It's a great time to be with people who are your seniors in some way. But watch out for aggression and watch out for conflict. Do try out new things and go out of the ordinary. The fifth, Sunday, Moon still in Taurus, opposing Jupiter. Discretion comes up to mind, and tactfulness, and overindulgence. Watch out for these. 
the moon will be squaring Mercury as well and trining Pluto. Uh, communication lines can be jumbled. Um, this is a Mercury retrograde that is squaring the moon. We can be a bit too um, sensitive and emotional about how we state things. We have to make sure that how we state things is clear to the other side and exact and that the things we understand are as well. Um, look for your inner strength on Sunday the 5th. Don't expect strength to come out of the environment. The 6th, very energetic day, especially with relationships, especially with satisfaction, the income of money. There's a grand trine between the Moon and Venus and Mars. That Venus, the planet of satisfaction and relationships and income and sensuality, is being fueled by the trine to Mars. It, we're becoming much more active regarding these Venusian aspects in our life and things can open up for us. We can just jump over boundaries that we've struggled with. We could feel a sense of plenty and, and grace coming into our life in these senses. Um, Tuesday, the 7th, we having Venus that same Venus ingressing into its own ruling sign of Libra. It feels great in Libra. It's connected to its resources and it's very cerebral. So all our need to meet, understand, and, 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 and encounter new ways of thought, new kinds of people, new understandings is heightened. Our need for relationships is heightened. I need, our need for satisfaction through others is heightened. And basically we are much more acutely aware of what is lacking in our lives in order for us to reach that equilibrium, that sense of thirst, that sense of not having something that I need to reach that equilibrium is heightened. Um, but also our love and drive for peace, harmony, and tranquility. Uh, Mr. Uranus is going retrograde on the 7th as well. And Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. If Mercury is communication, Uranus is instant communication, electronic communication, um, and advanced communication. If we're talking about the mind with Mercury, we're talking about the higher mind, Georgia, right? With Uranus. And if we're talking about navigation with Mercury, we're talking about fast movement forward into the future with Uranus. With Mercury, we're still very much connected to our environments, to our peers, to our uncles, to our brothers and sisters, to our neighborhood. And we still learn a lot from them. And we're connected to the times and fashions. But with Uranus, we're much ahead of everything else. And we become a snob about all these people still stuck in, uh, in, in the current. We see how advanced we need to become and what we need to change. When both these planets go into retrograde movement, this is when communication lines fall down. This is when agreements are broken. This is when misunderstandings are up. This is when electronic appliances and networks collapse and we see things differently we understand things differently and of course we need to make sure that we understand things correctly and that we send out the right message there's a lot about discretion there's a lot about tactfulness along these days in the transits in the skies and can be connected a lot also to emotional childish unaware behavior that is not constructive for us especially regarding aspects that deal with honor, prestige, and our place within the group, and it can be connected to our relationships of any kind, both within the family and, and, and uh, uh, romantic or with our people in work. Why am I saying that? Because Black Moon Lilith, which is, in which is in charge of the unaware side within us, which can act out in a childish, emotional manner that is not constructive. 
was to us and others and very needy in that sense. Black Moon Lilith is ingressing into Aquarius conjunct that Mars. So it can heighten that shadowy behavior within people around us or within us. It can drive us to actually deal with it, to actually be more aware of it. It can challenge us, but it can also heighten it and fuel it very strongly. And we could be very um, sure of ourselves. You know, and we could be very um, martial, which means very straightforward and very confrontational, and go through processes of individualization, of separation because of that behavior from the group, separation from the group. Um, so, of course, watch that, and if you encounter it, just don't don't uh, don't uh, make the flames any higher. The eighth, we have Venus trining Mars exactly. We have the Moon in uh, Cancer. It's an emotional day, and it's a day that we could be too judgmental or judged by others, as this is, there is an opposition to Saturn, and it's a very sensitive day in a sense that there's a grand cross between Chiron squaring the moon, squaring Venus, squaring Saturn. So a lot of issues that are connected to the emotional wounds that we are familiar with in our lives can come up regarding family, regarding our children, regarding mothering, regarding uh, our emotional side of life, our maternal side of life, our feminine side of life, and our relationships, our satisfaction, our income, and our work. These are all challenge during these days. But as I said, there's a much more beneficial, much more positive energy going on. So be aware of that and don't connect to it. Because Mercury is going to go into an inferior conjunction, Kazemi, on that day as well. And when Mercury is in inferior conjunction, it is said to be more of a earthly uh, manner than a superior conjunction. Superior conjunction is much more philosophical and spiritual, while inferior conjunction is more off these earth and plane. So this is a great time to visualize your road forward, how you would like this connection with your environment to develop and transcend its current difficulties. The limitations that you feel you have with your cognition, your ideas, your word, your expression, the way you Spread out your energy, uh, uh, your, your information, and, and actually collect it. So, when Mercury is in Kazemi, it is said that the heavens open, and if we do visualize, things can manifest in our lives. That there's an ear up above opening, that the gods are listening. So, both the 8th and the ninth are good for it. And the ninth has a grand trine, and this is the energy I was talking about, Beautiful grand trine because there's a trine between uh, um, Jupiter and, and, and uh, Neptune going on all the time. And now the moon connects to it. So there's a grand trine between the moon, Neptune, and, and Jupiter on that day. And it's a, just a very tranquil, calming, wise, artistic, and spiritual energy. But the moon also opposes Pluto on that day. That means that we could be too dramatic, total. And, and, and dig in a little too deep for our own good or find a need to dominate others or maybe others who are trying to dominate us and are obsessed with us or too hard with us as well. Exerting power on other people could be an issue on that day. So don't be too dramatic and don't be too total. And remember that we're going into a new moon that is also a part of Social, uh, solar eclipse. Every new moon is a time of an imprint, an energetical imprint. The energies that go through you, that filter through you during the last two days before the new moon are imprinted and follow you through the next lunar cycle. So be aware of the sponge that you are during the 9th and the 10th. And on the 10th we're having this 
uh, uh, it's a Friday morning Leo we having Venus squaring Saturn exactly uh, so as I said matters of relationship satisfaction and work judgment um, our need to uh, become much more mature and stay within our own rules and actually be responsible about things come up to the table the moon is going to oppose uh, uh, Mars so watch out on the roads watch out for aggression uh, watch out for impatience and um, don't be too impulsive there's also a square to Uranus on that day um, evening time afternoon time could be great for spending with people or just enjoying yourself having a good meal the moon is on on its closest approach to earth and it's on uh, the North Node, that's a great time for intuition, that's a great time to be with people that you're very close and intimate with, like family members or close friends. And basically it's a time to, that you can enjoy it at home, <laughs> much more than you can enjoy it in an unfamiliar environment. You can enjoy it in familiar, intimate environments much more than you can in others. And on Saturday the 11th, the Moon is squaring Jupiter, so again, matters of overindulgence, being untactful or indiscreet come up to the table. It is conjunct Mercury as well, and Mercury is squaring uh, Jupiter too, so really watch it. And it's part of the energy of this eclipse. We could say things or, or, or decide things that are not good for us on the grounds of us feeling, feeling unaccepted or not getting the legitimacy, the honor and prestige, the place that we need in the group or within our surroundings, and actually being too emotional and childish about it, with the excuse of them not doing it seriously enough and the way it is supposed to be done correctly. So you, you can see the paradox. I could be childish and act in a non-positive manner because I'm angry about other people not being professional enough, you know. It's a bit funny, but it's true. This eclipse is only partial. It's in 18 degrees Leo, so the old Leo uh, um, Aquarius axis is influenced again. And of course, if you have planets around the 18th degrees of Taurus and, and, and Scorpio as well, you are influenced by it more than others. And this eclipse is going to be seen only in the northern port points of, the, of Canada and Europe, Russia, Greenland, and so forth. And that's about it. That's about what I had to say. We're setting up a new English group. Uh, if you want to study with me through the computer, please uh, notify me and contact me personally. I want to thank you for sharing these videos, commenting about them, and liking them. Of course, they, ex they expose these videos to more people. And that's it. Have a beautiful week. This is an interesting, special, transformative time. It is a time that we could actually contribute positively to change around us and to change within us. So utilize this time. May you have a beautiful weekend and a great week ahead. This is Boaz Fader. Goodbye.